Hello, folks. Uh, we will now continue to live record the public comment session. As a reminder, your recorded comments will be distributed to the MTA board and will be posted to our board meeting webpage and YouTube channel. So the next speaker will be Nancy Montgomery, followed by Adam Wittenstein. Good morning, Nancy Montgomery, Putnam County Legislator along the Hudson Line. I listened to Mr. Morandi's comments about the Hudson Highlands Fjord Trail uh, yesterday as I listened carefully and participated in everything about this project since it began as a community effort to solve a problem many years ago. I'd like to commend Metro North's collaboration to date on HHFT, an ADA multimodal park project accessible from three Metro North stations. I hope we as elected and you as appointed officials can continue to do good process on this important infrastructure project. Permitting decisions on the shoreline trail portion of the project should be made only after you have reviewed the CEQRA mandated EIS and the full design and engineering plans when they become available for your thorough review. I have also carefully listened to Dave and his group, keeping in mind that I as an elected official and really you as appointed officials, we together have a responsibility to, to act on behalf of and in the best interest of all people and not just a few. The improvements along this corridor to date made by you, state parks and the Fjord Trail have mitigated some of the problems that have impacted our community. But many of the problems we had all those years ago still exist. No matter what we do, the people will still come. You will still bring them. And the infrastructure to manage them has not kept up, leaving a small community to pick up the pieces when your trains leave. Other groups and individuals and municipalities alike say it will bring the long needed infrastructure improvements along with the equitable access to parkland and the Hudson River shoreline for people of all ages and abilities, a walkable and bikeable shared use path and the opportunity to connect two counties and four municipalities through the inspiring power of nature. Some of these very things, as you've just heard today, yes. we in government, you and I are also in managing our constituency. I hope you'll continue to collaborate with DOT and OPRHP on this important project and look carefully at the EI. Thank you for your remarks. Our next speaker will be Adam Wittenstein, followed by Charlton D'Souza. Good morning. Um, first, I want to comment on the the, the procedure uh, regarding these hearings. Um, it seems very random uh, which speaker gets to speak first. Sometimes uh, when I register early, I often get moved to the, the late room, as you see here. Um, I feel some type of announcement at the beginning of the public session should be made as to how the speakers are being put uh, in order. Um, I wanted to speak today um, regarding my concerns with congestion pricing because the MTA is not providing um, suitable transportation or safety, um, either on the subways and buses nor uh, on the railroad. Um, for instance, the last 10 times I tried to go from Astoria to 74th Street Roosevelt, um, three times I had to detour away from the subway system, two, twice because of long service gaps, uh, and once because the train was vandalized to Queensborough Plaza, um, lead, leading me to spend significant costs on taxis. Um, the board yesterday was talking about how good on-time performance is to most customers, subway and railroad on-time performance is near 0%. Uh, I know the railroad has an internal six minute um, policy at the terminal station, but uh, most people don't don't know or care about that. There is a large number of trains that have not operated on their schedule once over the past 14 months, and there's never any adjustments to the schedule um, of individual trains. So it appears so it just it show it makes people nervous that the LIRR has no monitoring or no knowledge um, of where these trains are. Uh, lastly, regarding congestion pricing, um, there needs to be a way for people to exit uptown um, through through the um, Ed Koch Bridge. Um, there, there's cameras up that are grabbing fares for people to go 10 feet to the bridge. Thank you. Thank you for your remarks. Our next speaker will be Charlton D'Souza, followed by Miriam Fisher. Good morning. 
Yet again, I am outraged. I am completely outraged with the MTA. I registered at exactly 9.25 a.m. How is it that I was bumped and not called? But yet other people who came in later were called and they weren't even talking about agenda items. They were just talking utter nonsense. This is getting on our last nerves. And we are gonna file a complaint now with the governor and with the elected officials. We've had enough of this. And how dare you guys come into our communities and make a proposal. You guys took away our, our Atlantic ticket proposal. You guys took away all of our benefits. And now y'all want to give us a 10% discount, really? A 10% discount for an LIRR monthly when you took away our Atlantic ticket and the monthlies have no transfers to a bus or subway. This is outrageous, absolutely outrageous. And with all the crime going on in the subway and everything, the subway cannot handle the overflow crowds from congestion pricing. They cannot handle that. And then to add to that, you have other issues happening in the subway. Yesterday, a man was killed because he was using crack and he fell on the tracks and died at the 110th Street station. We spoke to Chief Kemper about conditions there over a month ago. Nothing has been done. There are homeless encampments in the subway system. People are committing suicide. Nothing is being done. And you guys want to throw congestion pricing at us. This is pretty disgusting. Believe in me as an advocate, this crap that's going on at the MTA where advocates are being sidelined and being dismissed is going to end because now we're filing a lawsuit against the MTA. That is my warning to all of you. Thank you for your remarks. Our next speaker will be Miriam Fisher, followed by William Ferns. Good morning. I will echo uh, the remarks by uh, previous speakers who registered on the dot as soon as the link opened and why uh, we were called so late. And there are times where I've never been called, though I register the second it opens. And we would like an answer about that. Echoing my disability colleagues, Seven long years ago this month, in 2017, disability advocates sued the MTA over the poor maintenance of the elevators we depend on. Seven years. That's how long the MTA has dragged out this lawsuit. Seven years. We want elevators that don't break down when we're in the middle of, when we're in the middle of a trip. We want an effective communication system so we know when an elevator is out. Washington, D.C. has digital signs of real-time elevator outages. The technology is there, New York. D.C. has it. We could, too. In 2007, 17 years ago, disability activist Michael Harris, uh, covered in the press, said, why can't conductors be alerted when an elevator is broken? They could advise riders. Auditory and visual signals of elevator outage can help many, especially those who can't use or don't use cell phones. We need other ways of communicating the outages. Seven years, Barton San Francisco settled a similar maintenance case just a few days ago, and Boston did years Please ago. Your you, remarks. You've heard this this morning. Seven years. Thank you for your remarks. Our, our next speaker will be William Ferns, followed by David Kupferberg. Okay, I just want to make sure I was uh, uh, unmuted. Okay, uh, my, my name is Bill Ferns. I live at 413 Grand Street, which is almost dead center of the 10002 zip code, which is East Chinatown, Two Bridges, and the Lower East Side. I'm a volunteer with the Senior Advocacy Leadership Team at the Manny Cantor Center. The Essex Delancey Station uh, is an interchange between four subway lines, the F, the M, the J, and the Z, and three buses, the M14A, M9, and B39. There's a major interchange for people traveling between Manhattan, Brooklyn, and Queens. According to the MTA's own statistics for 2022, Essex Delancey was the 27th, 27th busiest station 
system wide, and yet Essex Delancey is not accessible. The Essex Delancey station is a major interchange in the neighborhood. It was the 22nd busiest subway station in Manhattan's 120 station. There are currently 42 elevator accessible stations in Manhattan, and yet Essex Delancey is not one of them. The MTA has just announced plans to make seven more stations in Manhattan accessible with not one in our neighborhood, and six of those stations have uh, a less ridership uh, than Essex Delancey, and yet Essex Delancey is not one of them. The closest accessible train station to the elevator uh, with an elevator is the L train at the corner of 14th Street and 1st Avenue over 1.2 miles away. The lack of accessible subway stations in the neighborhood simply drives the elderly, people with disabilities, and parents of children to cars, either private cars or for hire vehicles, precisely when we are trying to reduce vehicular congestion low in Manhattan. So what is our ask? We want the MTA to commit to including elevator accessibility at the Essex Delancey Station uh, in the MTA's 2025-2029 five-year plan, and more importantly, to complete the project within that capital plan. We hope we don't have to wait seven more years also. Thank you. Thank you for your remarks. Our next speaker will be David Kupperberg, followed by Peter Farrell. Hi, my name is David Kupperberg, Vice President of Bus Advocacy, Passengers United. I agree with previous speakers that people should not be bumped to a session that board members will not see until after the meeting. It is disgraceful. At yesterday's finance committee meeting, the in-city railroad monthly pass fare pilot was on the agenda. It was shameful that few advocates attended the meeting. Advocates have been calling for free bus and subway passes for a long time. No other options were considered for the pilot. The even more shame is that the finance committee approved the pilot unanimously. I feel that advocates have been talking to the MTA about these issues through a brick wall. The proposed pilot is an insult to intelligence. If MTA is transparent, it, it would not have done such a thing. Regarding the elevators, having clean working elevators is a right. One elevator out is one elevator out too many. Settle the case. Thank you. Thank you for your remarks. Our final speaker today will be Peter Farrell. Peter, please unmute yourself. Thank you. I was speaking to myself. <laughs> So my name is Peter Farrell. Good morning, MTA board members. Um, I'm a resident. I live on the uh, main street in the village of Cold Spring, located in Putnam County along the Hudson River. I'm also a volunteer trail supervisor for the New York, New Jersey Trail Conference, and I'm responsible for maintaining safe hiking trails in New York, in New York State's Hudson Highland State Park. My family and I have resided in the village of Cold Spring for over 20 years, and we have no safe access from the village of Cold Spring to Hudson Highland State Park, and it's over 70 miles of beautiful hiking trails. Today, my children and I and others in the community and visitors alike have to walk on the sides of roadways or streets to access a trail that's only 100 yards away from the village of Cold Spring. I support safe access for all people to the New York State proposed Fjords Trail project along the Hudson River. This, this project that takes visitors from the riverside in the village of Cold Spring to the hiking trail safely is essential to our community and to the safety of all people and hikers within uh, the village, as well as the visitors that come to visit us. The park, the New York State uh, proposed park will provide safe access not only for the hikers in the community, and the visitors, but also people with disabilities in wheelchairs, walkers, seniors with limited capabilities, mom and dads pushing strollers, will all be able to access New York State parks via the safe passage provided by the Fjord, Fjord Trail Project from within the village of Cold Spring. The Fjord Trail Project is a win for the village of Cold Spring, for the residents for the village of Cold Spring, and for the visitors to the village of Cold Spring and New York State parks. 
I support safe, safe passage for all people to the state parks, and I appreciate the MTA's support for this project. Thank you. Thank you for your remarks, and thank you all for your participation and comment. This concludes the public comment session.